We're here to help each other, not hurt each other. And it's a shame that us, us, I'm talking to my black and brown communities, will sit here and fight. To appoint Lori E. Lightfoot as special investigator for the village of Dalton. Motion passed. The former federal prosecutor turned mayor will now be a paid investigator digging into the details of Dalton's multi-million dollar deficit and alleged misdeeds of Mayor Tiffany Hanyard. I will follow the facts where they lead without bias and reserve comments um, from this night forward until the work is complete. Lightfoot's to-do list is long, including finding millions of dollars in unpaid bills and a lavish village-funded trip to Las Vegas for Hanyard and a few trustees and village employees last year. All allegations of misconduct and all internal investigations, if any, along with any village, state, and federal law violations. But her investigation could be stunted before it even begins. Dalton Mayor Tiffany Hanyard, who wasn't present Monday, has the power to veto Lightfoot's appointment. It's obvious that a veto will happen, and, but we have the majority. Frustrated and financially strapped, Dalton taxpayers have questions about this $400 per hour investigation. I'm a very determined person. We are prepared to do what is necessary to get to the facts. But whatever Lightfoot finds, the former prosecutor lacks any authority to bring anything more than information. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about Wakanda, a.k.a. Dalton, Illinois, once again. And corrupt ghetto super mayor Tiffany Henyer and what to me seems to be an upcoming beef between her and uh corrupt former mayor of chicago lori lightfoot okay because last time we checked in on miss tiffany hanyard uh she was getting booed uh by her own residents for corruption okay for corruption she's facing uh allegations of covering up sexual assault involving one of her employees she's still facing the financial misconduct uh allegations mixed use of taxpayer money and the trustees that have gone rogue have hired lori lightfoot to investigate uh, Tiffany Henyard. So we'll see if we ever really get anything out of this investigation. I don't think that's going to happen. But until then, <laughs> Tiffany Henyard apparently has a podcast that at one point she claims was shut down. And she got mad uh, and went off on the snitches because they got her podcast shut down. But she says that she's going to drop the receipts on her podcast and the reason why i'm covering this video is because this video is hilarious right it's actually not funny because this is the mayor of a city right in the united states of america and this is an embarrassment uh for our leadership in this country it really shows you how democracy is not necessarily a great thing all the time okay when people are voting for these types of individuals to lead their uh towns and municipalities but i, I want to play this video because it, again it, it almost seems like a parody at this point i can't believe that is real but it is real in 2024 we have a woman like this running uh a pretty decent sized town in the united states of america watch this hey guys this is super mayor tiffany a Henry, the people's mayor so you guys doing a lot of snitching and y'all went and got my site shut down my Tiffany on the move podcast. Tiffany Henry on the move podcast. Well, it's said that when truth speaks, everybody gets scared and everybody gets up running. Well, just like I told you, if you want the tea, get it from me. And if you want to check me out, because I got other platforms, go to Spotify. And that way you'll see Tiffany Henry on the move podcast. Yes, Spotify. And you can also go to um, Apple Podcasts. Because those are different outlets to view uh, all the content. And y'all ask me for the receipts, but I got the receipts right here on ice, like I always do. Y'all ask for it, and I'm about to deliver. I got episode after episode after episode. Just wait your turn. Yeah, your turn coming. Just wait. Y'all doing all that talking. Y'all doing all that lying. And I told y'all, stop lying on me before I start telling the truth on y'all. And that's what this is. True speech right here. Residents, community nation y'all gonna be shocked at the mess that's all around y'all but i want to educate people um in my delivery of receipts that y'all thought i didn't have <laughs> i always keep my receipts 
I mean, I do a lot of talking or it may come out a little slower than norm, but I keep receipts. That way I can educate the world as what happens behind the scenes that y'all don't see. I don't like fake news because fake news tell you one-sided narratives. They don't tell you the truth. As you can see, you saw that first one. First one was lit, wasn't it? It was off the chain. And the problem I got is when they do it, it's cool. But when I do it, it's a problem. But this how I see it in my head. Play the video. It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Wow. Wow. Um, she really is the ghetto super mayor. I mean, straight up, right? Straight up. Um, I, I'm speechless. Like, I... I I don't have anything to say. Like, I'm actually getting secondhand embarrassment, okay? Because there are people that would defend this unprofessionalism uh, and basically say, well, you know, she's being unapologetically black, right? This is what they'll say in terms of her mannerisms, the way that she speaks. And it's like, look, I, I understand that you are mayor and I understand that growing up in a certain area around, you know, certain individuals, a certain culture, like, you know, I'm not saying that, she has to have the best uh, articulation when it comes to her speaking and how she speaks. But I do think that she should make an attempt to not play into stereotypes about, you know, uneducated black women. OK, I think that she should probably try to carry herself in a way that is professional and to speak professionally, considering how you are mayor of a city. Okay, you are the supervisor of a whole township, okay, of a whole municipality, a group of communities. And this is the way that you're carrying yourself. You're talking about the snitches. <laughs> snitches. You're talking about having receipts on ice. This is not how you handle business, right? If people have an issue with transparency, then you need to be taking up these issues with the people that have the issues, right? You need to be actually showing the residents and the trustees, your colleagues, the receipts that they're looking for, right? Answering the questions that they're looking for. And you don't do that with the podcast, right? You don't do that with a podcast. You do that by actually engaging with your constituents, okay? And your, and your trustees and your colleagues. That's what you do. You engage with them directly, right? This passive aggressive you know, going back and forth, addressing issues over a podcast, trying to play the PR game with the public, I think is beneath an elected official, right? A mayor of a city, okay? I understand wanting to tell your side of the story, but I think that it's important that if you have those receipts, if you have the information they're looking for, then you present that information to the public at a public meeting, not on a podcast where you are essentially taunting people who, I don't know, got your podcast shut down. I'm not sure exactly what she means. Maybe her website. Okay. I, I couldn't find a website for the podcast, but I could find a podcast on, you know, the sites that usually host podcasts. So I'm not sure exactly what she's talking about. Okay. But something she had, some website she had with the podcast got shut down and it resulted in this video. But I'm just saying, if you have the information, um, then you should share that with the individuals that need that information to help dispel the allegations against you. Um, you know, displaying the information on a podcast and, you know, telling people you got the receipts and throwing these random papers everywhere, um, you know, is uh, I, I don't think that this is the way to go about orchestrating the damage control to your reputation. <laughs> because at this point, the longer that you keep doing this, the more that you keep doing this, the more that you continue to speak out like this and to do what you're doing. Um, I don't think you're doing yourself any favors, right? I think that the public um, is drawing conclusions about your character and your integrity as an individual just from the fact that you present yourself in a way that is extremely unprofessional and is not worthy of a public official uh, leading a town. But there's no doubt in my mind that she acted like this, that this is who she was when she was working as a employee for the village, uh, when she was running for mayor, okay, when she was running for leadership, there's no doubt that that's the way that she was acting, right? That this is who she was. But, you know, people lining up and they voted for that, right? They lined up and they voted for an individual that I personally 
think that in a sane country, right, in a sane society, in a actual functioning democracy, you know, which requires an educated, you know, voter base, okay, people that actually understand, you know, how to vote, okay, and can judge candidates, okay, based off the merits, based off uh, their, you know, abilities to lead, <laughs> based off their professionalism, um, you wouldn't get this, right? This would never happen. The fact that somebody like this actually got voted into office really, really, really speaks volumes about the people that are living in that area and their ability to judge leadership, okay? It really does. I mean, it's embarrassing, okay? If I was a resident of Dalton, I would be embarrassed, okay? I would be so embarrassed by this lady, okay? Even if, even if there were no allegations against her, I would be embarrassed just by the way that she carries herself, okay? I mean, you should at least attempt to carry yourself with some professionalism, okay? This is not the way you should be conducting yourself as an official. But then again, I'm not really surprised. I mean, just what, 50, 60, 70 miles down the highway or whatever. You got Chicago that had Lori Lightfoot. They complained about her policies that were mainly liberal policies. And then they end up voting for somebody that is a progressive. That's even more cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs than Lori Lightfoot. So again, you know, maybe it's just something in the water, okay, in that area in Illinois uh, that is causing these people to vote for lunatics. But hey, I don't know, right? I have no clue. I just think that that video was, um, it was, it was, it was pretty embarrassing. It, it really was. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.